know, they're, what do you actually need out of it? What's going to change? So, you know, this really comes down to getting the right tool that you need for your goals. So Polyworks is going to be the more expensive, more all-encompassing software, but VX and Specs uh, can handle most of it, and most people are fine with, you know, everything that it can do. It's only if you have more discerning needs that you need to look for any of these other softwares. Um, so make sure, you know, you get the right tool for your job so you can save money, save effort, save how much work you need to put in on learning the different softwares and all that. So not all tools are created equal, as we'll see when we're going through it, how uh, the differences between them and how much uh, the more advantages that you can get from Polyworks over VX Inspect, and, you know, how much more powerful it is from there. So, and then with, you know, as tools get more powerful, they can get more complicated to use. So it's another thing to take with uh, Polyworks is that because it can do a lot more and has a lot more customization and stuff we can do with it, that it, uh, it's just a bit harder to use. So the first software we're going to be looking at is uh, VX Elements or VX Inspect, which is part of the VX Elements package, and this is all made software made by Creaform. And Creaform are the handheld optical 3D scanners that we deal with. Uh, they're very easy to use and uh, user friendly. The interface for the software, as we'll see when we're taking a look at VX Inspect, is it's very easy and straightforward. Um, you can pick it up, figure out what's going on, figure out what the buttons mean, and start jumping on with it, and you only need a couple days of actual training to be fully up to snuff with it. Uh, other things that the software gives us with uh, VX Inspect, you know, when we're acquiring all our data, the surface optimization algorithms make it very easy as we're scanning it and we get direct mesh outputs. Um, so as we're scanning the software and dealing with it in there, it's uh, you know, easy to see what's going on. Um, we don't have any limitations to the scan resolution with the scanners, with the Creaform scanners, and we get real-time visual as we're getting that data. And then once we have all our data, which um, is basically acquired the same between either Polyworks or VX and Spect, um, Polyworks had its own plugin, so you acquire your data with the scanners pretty much the exact same way you would with, uh, if you're going to inspect your VX and Spect. And then once you have your mesh, then we bring it in and we can see the actual differences between them. So with the actual VX Spec software, it looks a little something like this. And it's, uh, it's very straightforward. If I go ahead and jump out of that, and here's a actual inspection program already set up from our scan data. So on the right side of the screen, we have our CAD data that we've brought in, and this is just an IGIS or STEP file. Um, you can import, export that out from pretty much any CAD software. And then over on the left, we have our actual scan data. Um, the reason that it you know, looks like Swiss cheese right now is that we put uh, tracking targets on the part when we scan it. So the handy scan, scan this is used with, can see where it is in 3D space relative to the handheld scanner, collect all the data. And we could patch those holes over really easily. It's got really whole, powerful hole patching software. But when you do that, you're actually interpreting data that might not actually be there. You know, it's going to be interpreting its own curves and stuff. And if we're doing an inspection, We'd rather not have any interpreted data for that. So we bring them in together. And now what we have to do with the software is uh, line up the CAD to the mesh. And then from there, we can go and start doing our actual inspections. Um, down on the bottom of the screen, we have our actual inspection program that we've built up. So as we look down in here, we do our initial lineup. We went through and we started picking our A, B, and C datums. So I said, OK, this is datum A, B, C. We do a new alignment based off those datums to get an actual proper datum alignment, and then we can go through and get all our GD and T data from there. We go in, we can check flatness and parallelism, and surface profiles, we can get color map data, all that directly from this uh, inspection program. And once we have the inspection program built up, we can do multiple parts. We can run it extremely easily. We don't have to spend a lot of time running through it. So once I have this inspection program already built um, and we scanned our part, now we're here, now all we have to do is run it. So I'm just going to say measure all. And then it's going to jump into the first part of our inspection, which is lining these two up. So with uh, VX Inspect, it can't, you know, it's computer, right? They, they have a hard time figuring out what to do if you don't give them a lot of instructions. So we're saying, hey, put this and this on top of each other. It doesn't really know where to start. It's all so crazy to you. So we're just going to help it along real quick. We're just going to do a quick endpoint alignment on it. And this doesn't have to be super accurate. We're just doing it to get it close so that the uh, computer 
take it and run with it. So I'm just picking three points on uh, the model and the mesh, saying, hey, these are basically the same. You kind of see how they lock together here on the left side. And now when I hit OK, it's going to, computer's going to go ahead and fine tune that to actually line it up a lot better. And that's going to run through the whole inspection program for us. So it's going to say, OK, and then it's going to make, go through the datums we made, go through the new alignments, grab all the measurements we had, uh, measurements of cylinders, distances, cross sections, and it runs through the whole inspection program just like that. It's already done. So we can go through and I can look at things on here like the uh, Keller map. I get a quick overlay of this from the surface best fit we did. And it'll give us, okay, what's intolerance, what's out of tolerance, you know, if blue's going down to the negative, red's, you know, bulged out. And you get a really quick overview just like that. From there, we can go through and we can extract any data we might want from here. So we have all these cone readings and measurements we got. You know, it's all showing if it's in tolerance, out of tolerance. We can open them up and get more detailed information over on the left side of the screen. We can turn on specific values on and off. So if I only want the half angle of this cone, we can just see that and make that in the callouts. Um, if we wanted to get any of the other data, it's just, you know, we can just turn it on or off to have it show up later. Uh, we want to change any GD and T. We can add it all down here for true position, parallelism, have it, you know, relevant to datum frames and change it all as we go. And then with this inspection report, we can add uh, screenshots and everything to it too. So these snapshots we have in here, which are actually grabbed right from it. So if we do multiple parts, since we already have this inspection program built up, it'll automatically capture the new screenshots from any new parts we're going to be scanning. I go in, this is actually like a profile cutaway of how accurate those parts are. We can throw in, you know, call out data and see get specific measurements on it. You know, change our font size and update our screenshots just that easily. And then if we want to actually get this exported out as a finished report, all we have to do is go tell it to export report up at the top. And I'll just throw this on the desktop. Overwrite that one, and it'll actually open it up as a Excel document and give us a uh, ready-to-go, uh, just quick Excel document with screenshots and our measurements. Show things that are red when they're out of tolerance, and you know, really easy way to view all our data. It's generating our screenshots, and then it opens it up, and we have our. Excel report right here kicked out. We have our automatically filled out information we filled out earlier, screenshots of our parts, our datums, you know, all the measurements we've taken, and if things are in tolerance, out of tolerance, by how much. All right, all the way down, all our screenshots we put in showing the specific measurements we want to see from it. So one quick and easy report. And it's very easy to add additional information to our report too. So if I wanted to add something else to the bottom of my report down here, say I wanted to check for flatness or something, I can go in just select a specific area on my model saying, oh, I want that plane, and I want to check it for, make sure we compare that to our file. We can see our air distribution right off the bat from our selection on it. We can go down, set any GD and T we might want on it, hit OK, and that just adds it into the bottom of my inspection report, and it's just that easy to build it up and add things to it. Um, there's not a lot of trickery going on. So that's, uh, that's pretty much a rough overview of uh, VX Inspect. It's very easy to add uh, elements, take measurements, um, a little bit customizable where we can go in and say, you know, I want screenshots here, these readings here, I want to get this specific readings from my GD&T of like, oh, only show me the half angle of this thing, I don't care about the location of it. But that's about as far as uh, the VX Inspect goes. The other software, when we get into Polyworks is a bit different. So Polyworks is really cool. Uh, it's on the more expensive side, but a lot of the things you get from that are, one of them is universal inspections. So VX Inspect works specifically only with the Creaform scanners, where Polyworks Inspector actually works with almost all of the uh, measurement systems that are out there. If you have different brand laser scanners, if you have CMM machines, you have X-ray machines, um, all of their machines can all work off that same software platform. So if you have a whole bunch of different 
uh, needs in like your quality control lab where you have different softwares for a bunch of different machines, you can use PolyWorks Inspector to unify across all of those. All right, on top of that, you get advanced uh, measurement techniques and stuff in here. And, uh, you know, you get more advanced and customizable reporting needs. And there's a lot of really powerful SPC reporting options and controls where you can actually get the, uh, all that data kicked out for you in graphs and give your standard deviations on your variations and all that. Um, whereas in VX and uh, inspect, you can do multiple part inspections, but it'll kick it out on separate Excel sheets, and then you'd have to write your own macro rows to extract the data from it and build your own um, graphs and try and interpret the data yourself, where PolyWorks can do it all on its own. And so let's take a look at what PolyWorks looks, at, looks like. So here is the uh, PolyWorks metrology suite and just have a bunch of examples in here that we can open up and take a look at. So one would be if we just want to open up a random one to look at, we could try the uh, do the throttle body. So this will open it up into our VX or our, sorry, the PolyWorks Inspector program. So here we can see it's similar. You have your CAD data we brought in. We bring in your scan data. So again, within here, if we're using the Creaform scanners, for instance, acquiring the data is exactly the same. But then now that we have all those data, um, PolyWorks Inspector, first thing it has that actually can do an automatic best fit alignment if the geometry isn't, you know, symmetric, super symmetrical, where you can just say, hey, line these up best fit. And this program can actually figure out how to do that and just slap them on top of each other. So that saves a couple clicks. But then we go in and we have all our different circle readings and uh, we can get from here. And we can actually go and throw these into a uh, report. So let me open up one of the reports. And these reports can be a lot more customizable. So instead of just kicking out that Excel report, which we don't have a lot of control over how that looks in the end, if you have any specific reporting standards you need to meet, uh, you can uh, do that all within here. So that way, every time you kick out a report, it's always it's going to meet your company standards. And you don't have to uh, go re-edit the report every time. So the same thing, we're going to have screenshots and, you know, information about, you know, who scanned it, what material, what machine. Um, and then as we go through, you're going to have, I'm in a little on here. So we can have our different screenshots. We can have our control view. All this is customizable. So we, we can show, okay, here from these circles, or here's what we're measuring the diameters. Here's what the measurements are and the tolerances, all that fun stuff. Um, and we can customize all of this by bringing up our table editor, and I can just turn things on and off, add new stuff. So if I want to just take out kind of pointless information, like, oh, coordinate system world. Yeah, we don't need to see that. We'll just turn that off. Uh, control view name font or front. We have that. If we want to leave the units, take anything out, we can just turn that on and off wherever we might need to. And that just automatically updates in our table here and we can get it to display or not display any information we might want. And there's just some quick examples of measurements they're grabbing off it and how it's showing it. And again, these are all just pictures and things we can move around and customize and change the screenshots so everyone that'll automatically update for us. So other things that uh, PolyWorks can do really well is a SPC control. So, if we're scan, doing like in-process inspection and we're like, okay, I'm going to scan every hundredth part off the line and we're going to see if it's in tolerance or out of tolerance. And then we actually want to track all that data and figure out how things might be drifting over time and seeing, you know, where we might have an issue in the process or what uh, might be going out of tolerance. And when you have the full scan data, if you're using like a career form scan or something, we'll have all the surface profile information and everything with it too. So if I open up my SPC controls real quick, bring that up, and actually grab some things to look at. Now we can see as I grab different pieces from my tree over here, this will be giving us information. So this is an example of four parts that they've scanned over time. And the readings on it, what each one had its reading value at, you can hover over the specific area uh, parts that it was scanned and give you the actual readings from it and when it was, who did it. And we did that for all our different points in here. 
And not only do you get, you get all kinds of different charts out of this too. You don't just have like the straight, oh, here's your reading and here's how it changed. We can get the different trend graphs and statistics out of this. Um, you know, overall like measurements, you can set uh, upper limits and lower limits. You can also set warning limits too, where it'll say, okay, this passes, but it's in the kind of warning area. It'll let you know when it's towards the edge of your tolerances. All right, and we can get this for all our different parts and see how each part changes on different areas. All right, so it's, uh, it's a really powerful, really easy way to see uh, how things are trending over time all within the software. Uh, other things that PolyWorks can do really well is they also have some really advanced measurement tools. So if you have some specific things you're looking for, like uh, flush and gap measurements, where you want to see how well the door closes and that gap between the door and the frame, you want to see if that's uniform all the way down. They have specific flush and gap measurement tools that you can use. Uh, they also have specific airfoil uh, measurements and identification uh, tools in here. So you can get those specific measurements, which can be more harder to get, harder to reach measurements that a lot of softwares can't just grab right off the bat. Um, and I see if there's another option in here we can look. And then uh, as far as what they have in common, um, all the things that pretty much VIX elements can do, uh, Polyworks can do, and then more. So you can do your color maps, you can do your there we go. Um, you know, adding entity measurements and creating all that data. You can customize your uh, tolerancing and color schemes and maps if you want any specific zones to be a specific color. If you want to create or add entities, we just go in and add specific entities. And we could just extract, similar to the VX inspect, where we can do slots and circles and planes and cylinders and surface profiles from it or we can go in and just grab it directly off of the chart and then get our actual measurements and comparisons that way once I tell it to actually extract our measurements from it. But that's just a, uh, the quick, quick overview of uh, PolyWorks and VX Inspect. If any of that sparked anybody's interest, you can always contact us and we can go into much more in-depth demo later. Um, you know, in a quick summation of those programs, so we have VX Inspect, and, you know, it does most everybody's inspection needs. If you just say, oh, we just need to get these readings, we need these measurements, we need, you know, these basic GD&T items off of there, VX Inspect can handle it, and it's a very easy-to-use program. Um, you can kick everything out to a quick, easy Excel report that's easy to read if you don't have any uh, hard-wired uh, reporting specifications. Ease of use with the overflow and the button scheme and everything is pretty straightforward, and, then, and it only works with the, the Creoform scanners for comparing that and integrating it all together. And as far as PolyWorks Inspector goes, that works with, you know, most digital measurement tools you might have in your lab and other people's technologies. So you can unify everything onto one platform. You can get your advanced measurements if you're doing, you know, the more complex airfoil or flush and gap kind of measurements. You have our uh, SPC, this is just process control where we can get uh, trending reports and everything and graphs straight out of the program. And with our customized reporting so we can meet any specific standards. And, uh, you know, because of all the other things that uh, you can do, it's a bit more, a bit more learning, uh, a little bit steeper learning curve to pick up PolyWorks. And another thing that makes it a little bit more complicated is that it's also a little bit open source. There's a lot more power for the users to go in and change specifically how they might want to do things in here saying, oh, well, we have a specific reporting standard for how many layers of triangles we have to look back and how we're going to average things together. That is uh, available and PolyWorks actually go in and like edit for how it's actually pulling these measurements uh, to really meet company specific standards where VX inspects a little bit more locked down and it's kind of the trade off between ease of use and complexity right there. But that's, uh, that's our quick overview for a uh, quick little uh, intro to VX Inspect versus PolyWorks Inspector. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to shoot them over to us in the chat. If not, I believe later we'll have this uh, webinar up on our website for people to view with 
you know someone that wasn't able to attend, if you think they might have gotten anything out of this. Or if you come up with any questions later down the line, you can always feel free to uh, shoot us an email, or uh, if you're going to one of the actual DI events we have coming up, uh, track us down there. Okay, well, thank you, Tim, very much for your time. I um, would like to thank everyone else for attending this morning. Once again, this is the first of 40 webcasts that we're doing here at Computer Aided Technology for Design Innovation Month, and we hope that you have a chance to attend some of the others. Um, if you have not registered for any of the others, you can get to them on our main page at www.cati.com. And like Tim mentioned, we're going to be putting on live SOWERS 2019 What's New events in um, areas around you. So feel free to hop onto our website as well to go check those out. And um, we'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you very much.